Hello, welcome. I'm Claire Harrigy. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I'm the social media coordinator for Seattle Print Arts, and I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that we're on the traditional lands of the Duwamish, the first peoples of Seattle. Um, I want to honor the land itself and past and present uh, Duwamish people for their caretaking and stewardship of the land. And I want to invite you to join me in uh, paying real rent to the Duwamish tribe via real rent, uh, which is a nonprofit group. Um, I think Nikki is putting that in the chat um, so you can take a look at that um, and help support um, the Duwamish people. Um, I am really excited to be here today with all of you. Um, we're doing our third of five chats with artists from the Contemporary Northwest Print Invitational at um, Davidson Gallery. <laughs> it just opened on Thursday and um, we saw a video and shared it online um, and I'm excited to go in person. Um, the artists that we're talking with today are Eileen Jimenez, Lori Brown, and Linda Swenson, Harwood Swenson. And um, I'm just gonna have them introduce themselves a little bit, talk a little bit about their work, and then we'll have a conversation about um, the pieces in the show and um, how their works um, intersect and diverge from each other. And yeah, so Linda, do you wanna go first? Oh, uh, sure. Um, so I'm just doing like an introduction or I'm sort of a background of my, of my life. Is that what? Um, you're just gonna, uh, so I'm just trying to stop the share so that you're the video. There we go. Um, just uh, say who you are and um, what your work is like and um, you know, just a, a brief introduction of okay. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. I really appreciate being here tonight. Um, thank you to SPA and to Davidson um, for putting this together. And I'm so honored to be in the show. Honestly, um, I was super surprised to be included. And um, it feels really great to be in this show that feels like it's um, a little bit of a shift in how uh, in perspective for Davidson. So and also Thank you to the curator who's not probably here tonight, but um, I think she did a really great job. Um, so my, uh, I am a, a printmaker as obviously, and um, I grew up in the Northeast and uh, was lucky. I had a great art teacher in high school who was also a printmaker. She um, was a woodcut artist and introduced that to me, you know, in like 10th grade and we did a lot of screen printing and then I went on to college in Michigan and I mostly focused on lithography and some photography and took a little bit of a hi hiatus after college um, working in print until like 2007 or so when I happened to be kind of neighbors with Wendy Orville. So that was my good luck. Um, and then from there, just sort of started going to Pratt and um, learning more about etching and um, eventually sort of came to this place where I am, where I sort of feel like I'm, I use a hybrid of materials and don't sort of do traditional printmaking, but mix it with cyanotype and um, other, other techniques. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Eileen, would you like to go next? Sorry, I was muted, of course. <laughs> um, so hello, everybody. My name is Eileen Jimenez. Um, I am originally from Southern California, so I've been living in Seattle for about three years now. Um, and two years ago, I took a class, like a six-session class or something at Pratt, and it was like a printmaking class um, and I fell in love with lino cuts. Um, I feel like when I did lino cuts it, it all kind of clicked like I feel like I finally found a medium where I felt like myself like I was able to do all these things that I had pictured before. Yeah so lino cut is definitely um, uh, 
I feel I have felt the most like myself in the last two years because of Lino Cut. <laughs> um, my family is Otomi, so that's um, the pieces in the show are uh, related to that. Um, we're an indigenous group in Mexico, so in the Michoacan area. Um, and yeah, in my pieces, you'll see a lot of the stories of my family and um, my community and things like that. So uh, professionally, I actually um, did not study art. Uh, I went to UCLA for college and I studied French literature, super random. <laughs> and uh, for work, I'm an administrator at Highline College, so down by the airport. So um, art is definitely my, uh, I don't like to call it my hobby because I feel like it's the thing that kind of helps me feel alive. So it's, it's my, uh, I don't know, lifeboat. <laughs> Totally. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, and Lori. <laughs> yeah, hi. And I wanted to thank Seattle Print Arts and Davison Galleries for this show, and I'm also very honored to be in it. Um, I'm originally from the Northeast as well, but I've lived in the Northwest longer than I lived in the Northeast, so I <laughs> guess I'm a Northwesterner now. <laughs> um, and so I went to school in, I didn't start doing printmaking until college. And then I just kept taking printmaking classes and sailing and didn't graduate so I could keep printing. It took me a while to graduate, but I started with lithography and then I did etching. And at the time, silkscreen was very toxic. It was not water-based, it was benzene and all sorts of bad things. So I didn't really do much print uh, silkscreen at that time. And then um, I moved to Seattle in 79 and I started printing at Seward Park um, where Peter Ramsey had the press, the brand press that's now at Pratt. Um, and when they moved the press from Seward Park to Pratt, he and his wife at the time started a studio which was called 312 Printmakers and it was on 312 Washington. And eventually he ended up um, selling the press to the renters. He did a few moves in there. And that's when we became press work. So that was in 1985. I was pregnant with my oldest son. And um, it, so we moved a few times since then. And now press works is in my basement. <laughs> but um, so we've been around for a while. And uh, I started teaching high school printmaking at Stadium High School in Tacoma in 1998 and started a program there um, where I had to teach silk screening. So I had to learn how to do it non-toxically. <laughs> and so Larry Summers actually, who was at the University of Oregon where I graduated um, from, he gave me a lot of tips and advice and I, acquired all, I, get, I got to actually set up the program and acquire all the equipment and started the printmaking program at Stadium High School, which I passed on to Virginia Hungate Hawk, who we job shared for a few years and now I'm retired. So, um, yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I retired in tw four years ago and that's when, um, that guy who thinks he's president became president. And uh, I went down to Oaxaca um, and got together with two women in Oaxaca and just we decided we we're gonna do this show of, because it made me so mad, his attitude towards Mexicans. And so we did this show, um, tw 40 artists, 20 from Seattle and 20 from Oaxaca. And I went down, originally I'd gone to Oaxaca in 80, nine I think with my family and then we went back in 95 so I had a lot of really good things that you know memories of Oaxaca but I I didn't get back there until 2014 when I took a class with Pratt because um, my husband died in 2007 so it was hard to go back I knew I loved it and so once I went back I fell in love with it again and was able to I've been going back every year ever since. <laughs> and so anyway, the show took place last year in 2019 and both in Oaxaca and Seattle. 
and it was really a great experience collaborating with all the artists from both countries, both cities. So, yeah. Thank you, Lori. Sure. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to maybe ask uh, the artists to uh, talk about their pieces a little bit. Um, maybe I will do a little introduction. Um, I apologize, I didn't uh, mention um, our juror for the um, invitation, print invitation as the Kire Tagle. And you, the three of you are actually, she, she grouped um, all the work in the um, show into like four categories and all of your work um, kind of fell into the category of, or was grouped into the category of portraits of resilience and resistance. And um, just kind of looking at the um, uh, some of your work and then also techniques and um, like Lori, you and Eileen, both of you work a lot in um, lino cut and it really speaks to you. And also um, all of you use um, additional um, techniques beyond the printing. So, um, you know, colored pencils, watercolor, um, different ty kinds of hand coloring. And so I wonder um, maybe if we could talk about the pieces um, in the show specifically, um, just for a little bit mm -hmm. um, and the kind of the inspiration behind them and the inspiration behind your work um, in general. So um, whoever wants to start, we can go in the same order or <laughs> if someone's yeah, excited. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> um, so my piece is down in the bottom uh, called That Golden Moment. And that's part of a series that I started in 2018 um, and similar to Lori's um, visceral reaction to Trump, um, this came about, not this specific piece, but this series started with having sort of a visceral reaction to the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. And then that just like sort of snowballing in my head to being just so angry about the treatment of women in general, you know, since Trump was campaigning. And so um, the objects, the, the white spaces in the, the so a cyanotype is a, um, is a photographic process that probably most of you already know this, but I'm just going to lay it out is um, it, this, this is a, um, it's a, it's, it's an alternative process photography um, uh, printing method. And so what I do for the blue paper is, you know, hand make this photosensitive paper and then do uh, um, objects on top of the paper and expose it outside in the sun. And so the objects in this case were rocks. And um, the beginning of the series, I had been sort of doing these very like methodical laid out rocks. It just sort of like the humble object idea of sort of like, you know, thinking about elevating a humble object like a rock. And then during that hearing, I started seeing them as eggs and seeing them as like, potentially as, you know, women's faces. And so then I started using the image transfer technique um, to create um, faces out of the, the rocks and then use that whole idea of something moving from 3D as a rock to 2D as just an image of a woman and having the viewer sort of mix that idea together, thinking that the rock is hitting the woman. Um, and so in, in this case, there's cyanotype, image transfer, and then uh, relief. The golden moment part is um, sort of a, a positive addition. This, this piece was finished during the, um, uh, the be sort of the beginning of the, um, uh, the protests when people, when it really felt very like, I mean, it, it, it felt really awful, but it also felt like there was a change that was happening. And so that's why I titled it This Golden Moment. And, um, and then the addition of using, I find like when I add uh, either hand coloring or colored pencil, it sort of gives me this sense of freedom where I can really go for it, like just go for that image. And then you can sort of, um, instead of being like sort of 
you know, doing a multicolored plate image is so taxing and takes so long. And there's, and it just, you know, it just sort of can stop you, I think, as far as it being um, really emotionally, um, uh, just what's the word? I don't know. It just, it, it just feels like when I can just go ahead and like finish something the way I want to without having to use um, a traditional printmaking technique, it tends to feel a little bit more explosive on the page for me. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I can relate to that. And um, I wonder if <laughs> uh, Eileen and Lori can also relate to that. <laughs> um, thank you. Eileen, do you want to speak about your pieces a little bit? We just have one um, up right now, but um, Eileen has three pieces, um, which are really beautiful. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so this one is in. Um, Otomi Matriarch Eloisa. So this is my grandmother's portrait, actually. Um, and in my art, I think you can see I do a lot of portraiture, um, usually people of color. I remember growing up and seeing all the read posters, like in my library, or um, just like, I, I don't know, like I didn't think that people of color or people who look like me or my community got their portraits done. <laughs> like I thought it was just like, I don't know, like a rich king, queen kind of thing, you know? Um, and so that's why it feels really important for me to do portraiture. Um, and in particular, my family, I think, uh, I, I don't remember who I had emailed, but it was, it feels really cool this piece sold. And um, I was telling my partner, like I, I think my grandmother would think it was wild that some that her portrait is in someone's house <laughs> like um so it feels really cool that's um this one's my grandmother and my my mom's is there too yeah. um awesome. and yeah and then it, so this one is a lino cut that's the basic outline and then um all the colors on her are watercolor um and then the background is a handmade um paper that I bought in Victoria. Um, and so all the things feel really um, like the handmade paper. I, whenever I visit a new place, I buy handmade paper. It's like a, a thing that I love to incorporate into my art. And in particular, this, this one I, I picked because of the color red. It just reminds me of this like strength for, for my grandmother. Um, in, in Mexico, she did a lot of like uh, political organizing and things like that. And I feel like she was always this kind of person who people thought were like scared of because she wasn't the kind of woman that were, was in that time, you know? And so I feel like this is who she was, like this really strong person, her, her little lanyard, um, her, she was really proud of her kids who went to college. So I, I actually, printed um, copies of this and sent it to all my cousins, all my uh, 20, <laughs> 20 cousins and aunts, uh, and just mailed it to them. And they like were all really excited about it because they were like, oh, she's wearing the lanyard. And uh, whenever each of us, like she has a UCLA lanyard, a Chapman University lanyard. So they, they were all like like the college lanyards of her grandkids and stuff. So, so yeah, it just, um, and the, the, the color feels like a perfect way of making it match the image that I have on my mind and I don't know. That's great. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Lori, how about you for your piece? So mine is called Chasing My Tail and um, so when I gone to Oaxaca the last four years since I graduated, since I retired, <laughs> I taught high school so I think of it as graduating, but um, I always would, I was working in different studios, but and doing etching and lithography and collagraphs, but I'd always have a piece of linoleum and do an image so I could do it back in my um, room, you know, when I wasn't at the studio and stuff. So this was from 2019. Um, and it, the image is from a, a stuffed animal that I bought in Oaxaca, because there's so many awesome things in Oaxaca that I bought for my granddaughter and it was it's like an anteater so that's what um, I used for the main image and then I just really like working with patterns and textures and color and I used to do reductive prints and 
multiple plate prints, but I've found that chincolé is a lot easier. <laughs> and so um, the other color, the red, orange, and turquoise are all uh, chincolé, and then the green is, um, is prismacolor. And um, during this pandemic, it's really been very um, calming to me to be able to use just draw back into my prints. So I've been doing a lot of drawing back into my prints. Um, so that's sort of, you know, how that, and I like to put together different textures and shapes and just things that don't normally, you don't see together. So I guess that's what I was thinking about. Thank you, Lori. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing so we can jump back into uh, video saying hi. <laughs> um, so, I think that that's really, um, I think all of you touched on, you know, that, uh, you know, maybe immediacy of like the adding to um, with your hands and, um, but also like how, I mean, does anybody want to talk about like the, maybe how the, the print uh, making part add, uh, gives, the piece that you're working on structure and then like adding to um, with hand coloring, um, watercolors or um, uh, colored pencils or whatever, maybe Sheen Calais, like uh, makes it so that, um, yeah, it feels different to you or like if, if that's interesting <laughs> or we can go a different direction. <laughs> uh, I can just say that, um... For me, when I'm doing the image transfers, they're not going to be perfect. And so to be able to go in there and layer in with some color with colored pencils. And in this case, I, for this series, the women's faces look kind of sketchy. And I love that quality um, versus kind of manufactured. So I think it brings um, the hand in, you know, to it, which is, I think, what you said. And um, yeah, I think it's effective in its own ways, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I went to school in the 70s, <laughs> um, uh, they were traditional, they were really traditional and that additions had to be exactly the same. And if it, there was a little bit of a miss something in there that that wasn't acceptable. And, and at a certain point, I decided that's too anal for me. <laughs> so <laughs> So I just, um, so I'm, I'm really liking to be able to add color and sometimes it's a little bit different green than the other time. And so, so my additions are varied. I mean, but the main structure is the lino cut and, you know, and I, you know, I find that, you know, I usually come upon some colors that work better than others and stuff, but it just allows me to make them a little bit more individual and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so. yeah and for me I, I think I love the softness of watercolor like I feel like um, I could do you know multiple plates and things like that but I don't know that it would achieve that like same texture or something um, with the watercolor and I, I also love that you can make each look different like that there is no you know that there are no rules really um, in terms of coloring yeah Yes, and I would say that um, I respond to that, um, and I um, I think that it's yeah, it's interesting because it's it it's like a permutation of something, and yet there's for me like I really like um, like seeing the patterns and the differences of things, and so like that's what I find is really interesting about you know printmaking and hand coloring or hand um, additions. Um, so thank you. Um, let's see some other thoughts, um, about, um, how your work, all of your works kind of intersect is like all of you, um, have worked with like in education. Um, so I think that's really interesting. Um, does anybody want to talk about like how, like working in education, like influences your work or doesn't or <laughs> um, yeah. I think for me, I think I always share my art with my students and other people's art. And I think that the kind of 
it's really cool to see that it blows their mind that you can do different things. Like I, I can be a professional at a college and also do art. Um, and also just, it, it's been really cool to be able to, um, I actually got a four culture grant to, to teach a uh, lino cut um, here in White Center and also just in South King County. And it's been really cool to be able to do that at work. So we um, had a couple lino cut workshops when we still met in person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was great it was it was really cool and seeing that it also clicked with them in some of the same ways like I have a lot of students who are Samoan um, and they're they're um, there is some traditional things that really resonated with them and uh, some of the patterns that they were able to create um, it was really cool to see them interact with Lino in that way ah, awesome that's great congratulations <laughs> um, so the um, grant is for um, working at work for you with the kids? Um, it was like to teach five sessions in South King County. So mm -hmm. I did a couple in Virian, White Center, and then uh, Highline is in Des Moines. So mm -hmm. well, great. Yeah. Awesome. And how old are the kids that you're working with? Oh, they're 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 all college age ah. so like 18 to okay. my oldest student is 68 so oh, wide right. range yeah. yeah well i i started out teaching when my kids were little and i was teaching elementary school and then i taught high school for almost 20 years and i love working with high school kids because they're um you know, there's so much going on when you're in high school. <laughs> and stuff. and I, I certainly learned a lot while I was teaching. Um, and then when I um, graduated from when I retired, <laughs> um, I, um, I was able to teach with Path with Art, which is working with people recovering from homelessness and low income people. And that was just an amazing, you know, I learned so much from that. Because um, the, the bad thing about high school is just you have to deal with the administration and <laughs> all the rules, <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> but um, I love the kids. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of teaching myself, but um, it's, it's sort of in one-off situations. So there, it's, I work at SAM and I'm the studio manager for the studio programs. So sort of all ages. Um, and I think that I definitely learn a lot from the kids. Um, but also, I think the most fun is doing the bigger events and creating like um, ways for adults who haven't done any art in a long time or something like that. They come upon this table and with interpretive materials somehow connected to the exhibition or something. And then they just like sit there all night and work on something and they're so <laughs> excited. And so I feel like um, what I learned from all that is just like how a important it is to be a maker and to share that and to um, and for people to have outlets and um, and just like how incredibly talented people are, you know, I mean, really just um, some of the work that people do just dropping off at a table or is just like gorgeous. And so I think that um, just there's just, I don't know what the point of that is, but it's just really interesting, you know, to see how, um, if anybody's just open-minded to it, they can usually create something that they're pretty excited about. You know? Yeah, I think to uh, your point and what Eileen said about like it being, I feel like, you know, maybe for kids it's like, it's hard, the way that our education system is, is that it's hard to, and you know, after in work world, like thinking about yourself as an artist is, or making art instead of just doing, you know, your job, um, like is not um, very common and it, sh I think it should be. Right, and yeah. We should be incorporating it into all aspects of what's happening and like, um, yeah. So I think that that's really, um, exciting to see and I think that's I mean for me I really love that printmaking is so accessible in so many ways for people um, and approachable um, and that repetition of imagery <laughs> <laughs> 
what do you all think? <laughs> well, I mean, one of the reasons I originally really was attracted to printmaking is because it's such a community. You know, you have to have a press and not everyone can have a press. And so you had to work in a community as opposed to being a painter, or, you know, and working isolated. So that's what I love about printmaking. And also, obviously it's a reason you know it's been a good communication tool um for activism and that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. and i and that's why i love teaching in high school because we you know you could talk about the history of printmaking and that's how you get the information out there by making multiples of things to you know like you do with your silk screening mm -hmm. protests and stuff yeah yeah yeah, I definitely think community is a huge part of printmaking for sure. I mean, it's so sad to not have our little group at Pratt right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sad. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it um, definitely brings people together in really powerful ways. Yeah. Um, I do feel really like people are like the with COVID, like the, the ways of, the different ways of being creative and printing are still available to us at home, um, you know, by hand printing, um, if, if one wanted, um, or is working, or it changes it to be maybe a little bit of a smaller, you know, something that you're working on. Yeah. Um, how are all of you, um, how is, COVID, you know, affected you and your making um, and anything else that you would want to speak to on current times? Uh, I can start. Um, and my, yeah, I haven't actually been able to make that much stuff. I, my brain just is not engaged in the right way. But I, you know, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm doing, I can do some cyanotypes here and I'll I'm, I'm actually happily going to a, um, a, a residency in September. So I'm trying to prep and, and hoping that um, once I'm sort of um, just out of the, um, just sort of like out of this routine and, and into a new routine and like a little bit disciplined about how I'm working, I, I might be able to produce. But you know, it isn't, it is like, there's a lot of material and I'm hopefully that will produce something, but it's, it's not, I, for me, it doesn't feel like um, a high production time, even though I have more time, you know. Sure. Um, what uh, residency are you? Are you oh, it's, um, it's in Petaluma. It's uh, the In Cahoots one. All right, cool. Very yeah. Cool. Um, what are they, are there things that they're doing for specifically with COVID that have changed? Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty small, you know, so you get your own, you have your own kind of space anyway. And then uh, when you are together, because there will be some crossover, you will wear, you know, masks and gloves. But in, I think that there will only be four people uh, is, and we're not in the same space all the time. So I think um, there'd be less, like I think uh, traditionally there would be like more shared meals and more shared spaces, but because of COVID, I think it'll be limited. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it, at least it's still happening. You know? Where is that? Linda? Where? It's in Petaluma, California. It's like just north of San Francisco. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think that'd be really, really fun. <laughs> well, I can go ahead. I, well, I've been, I mean, I'm lucky because I have press in my basement, but, um, but I found that, you know, I really uh, was paralyzed for a while, you know, in the beginning of the COVID, but I, I found that cutting linoleum was just very soothing for me. So I cut a lot of linoleum, but I didn't, really print it up that much. So I have a bunch of plates that I've done in the last four months That's that funny. I need to figure out how I want to print them and how I want to chinclay and how I want to color them. So mm -hmm. lots of decisions. Yeah, a lot of decisions. <laughs> but the cutting of linoleum is very calming to me. <laughs> yeah. What is, um, have, has the subject matter uh, 
has it changed or do you feel like you're well it, yeah it's sort of interesting i found some old plates that i'd started i didn't really remember what i was trying to do and i just sort <laughs> of finished them <laughs> in whatever way and also i have because i've tra you know my husband was a travel writer we went to mexico a lot so um we have a lot of folk art from Oaxaca and different places in Mexico. So I've just been using those images to, so that's kind of similar to <laughs> my other pieces, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. adding the textures and stuff like that. So, yeah. Great. That's cool. what I've been doing. Yeah. How about you, Eileen? Um, I actually think I have been producing more art than I had been in the past. Um, and I think it's it's similar to um, what Lori was saying about the, I don't know, some kind of <laughs> emotional release from cutting linoleum, I think. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm making something like every day, which feels wild when I say that out loud, but I, but it's, um, yeah, it and, it, it, and again, I feel like that's the thing that helps me feel connected to my body because everything else feels wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, totally. You have been very prolific. <laughs> I am so impressed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so if everyone, if anyone's on social media, um, we've posted um, all of um, artists handles um, in our posts. And yeah, it's really great to follow your work. And I'm totally inspired by like how much you do work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I can totally understand the like, uh, yeah, needing something to feel connected to your body and um, present in the world in that way that you do feel like <laughs> in your <Yeah>. body. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. um, so um, we have a question. Nikki said, each of your works takes take on an element of healing. Do you feel the final result? brings the healing or is it more about the process? Um, and Eileen, can you talk about the Yeeha Collective? I know I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can, I can talk about the, the collective. Um, so I think last year, I, it feels so far away from now, but I, I think it was last year. Um, Seattle had uh, I think it was a year-long process and it was like a lot of indigenous artists from lots of different parts so um, that was really cool and really validating I think um, indigeneity in the Pacific Northwest has, has been really interesting to me because I feel like it's really present everywhere um, and it was really cool to be a part of that collective because I feel like for the first time in a major way, my indigeneity was recognized. Mm -hmm. um, and so I produced a, uh, a couple pieces for them. And then um, I think there was like 160 indigenous artists. Um, so they have a really cool website where they display all of it. But the piece that, um, that I created for actually the, the, protest signs mm -hmm. with Pratt um, was selected for the amplifier uh, global yeah, call. So great. It was really cool. So awesome. um, yeah, <laughs> but that but that story, that is actually what, what Yi Hao means is it means together we lift the sky and it's this really mm -hmm. beautiful story that talks about Yi Hao as the as the common word um, like it's, I don't want to, um, uh, like I feel like I can't do it justice because I can't say the entire story in the time that we have, but um, it's just like this common word that is used to mean together we lift the sky. And um, yeah, it's just been really cool to see the evolve, involvement of that, of that initiative up here and how um, centralized indigenous people's stories have been through, through that collective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes and I'm uh yeah I think that that uh that your image definitely was um resonated with people and people love it so yeah. thank you for creating it yeah like, and yeah. it brings I think it brings a lot of um I don't know uh I mean for me and then other people I've spoken with like it 
it brings a lot of um, like hope and um, feelings of, yeah, solidarity and togetherness. Um, so I thank you. <laughs> Um, does anyone want to speak to um, the other part of the question, like um, of the parts of healing, um, healing as a result of art or while you're making or finishing pieces? I guess for me, again, it's, it's the cutting of linoleum is the most sort of healing part of it and riding my bicycle. <laughs> so I can and gardening probably but yeah and so isolated things that at least make you feel alive you know so mm -hmm. I guess. do you feel like it's also uh maybe that connection to body um because those are all like active yeah <laughs> <moving>. I, mean, <laughs> I feel like right now we're so lucky because summer there's nothing better than summer in seattle and the weather's been beautiful and you know, you can be outside most of the time. And I, I hate coming inside when I can be outside, you know, but I'm a little worried about the winter when the rain comes and you're sitting, you know, you, cause yeah. now you, at least you can sort of see people from a distance, you know, but then it's going to be more difficult. So, mm -hmm. so we got to get soggy outside. Um, yeah, soggy. I'm trying to figure out a, yeah, some way to resolve that problem, but <laughs> wanted to get rid of, you know, the president and <laughs> get a new yeah. one in there. <laughs> we're working, working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. We're all working on it as hard as we can, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, the, um, the, uh, sorry, the, going back to the healing question, mm -hmm. um, I think it definitely is more of a, the process of healing for me is to, to see the idea come to fruition and then to feel satisfied with it. I think that has a sense of healing for sure, you know, mm -hmm. at least for um, art making. And then, you know, I guess the same thing for, for uh, feeling more connected to your own body or to feel like being a, that you're a part of the world or something like definitely um, moving my body and going for runs and, Going for long walks, it's definitely been healing, you know. I guess I would, I mean, a, a lot of the artists that um, are in the show and that we've spoken with do use, um, they're not just uh, using print techniques, so they are using watercolor or drawing or, and I wonder um, if there's this um, maybe like, uh, that ability to go in different directions um, that maybe isn't afforded to us in life, maybe in some ways. Um, and that like making these different marks or ways of um, finding the the end um, in the prints. I don't know, those are, that's just something that I've been thinking. Like breaking the rules right now, you know, like thinking. Well, I mean, and I don't even know, yeah. I mean, I don't even know if it's necessarily break, breaking rules, but like um, writing a different end to this process. Um, like instead of it all being the same, um, you know, the same edition, um, but a, a varied edition and that, you know, it's kind of like choosing different paths. Mm. That's just something I've been thinking about. <laughs> cool. Um, so if there are any questions, um, definitely um, put them in the chat or uh, put it in the chat. And then if you want to say it out loud, you can turn on your video um, and we can um, answer questions that way or ask questions that way. Um, artists, are there other other things that you wanted to talk about uh, with the specific um, like time and your work? Um, yeah, that's <laughs> Is there something going on with the video? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We're good. 
Okay. Lori, it's a different Lori. Did you have <laughs> something? <laughs> no. Let's see. Um, Linda uh, Thomas asks, has the need to communicate changed during these crazy times? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, and that's what's so nice about printmaking. And Linda and I actually, she sent me a postcard of a drawing that she'd done and I sent one back and that felt really good. Like, you know, there was some contact in real life, even though there was no contact in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so um the communication is you know since it's mostly on the screen you know mm -hmm. and not not in real life yeah yeah i the zoom stuff has been it's finally feeling you know fine at this point but it's definitely so different at, this, at first wasn't it just so bizarre and uh <laughs> <laughs> just so otherworldly like we live in a different time altogether all of a sudden um yeah so you know doing any kind of art making i think was definitely important you know yeah yeah i think um i feel really excited by the sense of community that there seems to be in the in the printmaking community um uh, specifically, I was a part of this like lino cut night school with a couple other printmakers because we we're all self taught. So we were kind of teaching each other techniques. Um, like we would give each other a challenge like reduction printing and then we would try it and then meet up in person. And we've uh, continued to do some of that through Zoom. And the cool thing has been that because we're doing it on Zoom, we've also connected with people in Pittsburgh and like uh, Baltimore. California and we're putting a zine together um, as well and it, it feels really cool like it feels even though this is an activity that you would do in community usually right um, that you also can can do it still from from so far away yeah and bring in people or printers that you wouldn't normally connect with yeah that's yeah. really wonderful and great um, yeah, any other questions that anyone has you want to, or for each other <laughs> artists? Yeah, Lori, um, maybe you can talk about the composition that you chose and the hands and just sort of like, tell me about that. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I put, um, I just sort of like the idea of putting things together that don't make any sense, you know? <laughs> and I guess I had the nose of the anteater and then the tail. And I thought, well, what goes on the sides? Well, someone must be holding this, you know? So I wanted, you know, and then I threw in all the patterns and stuff, but I just sort of, I'm not very good at planning things in advance. It sort of develops and I, and when I do my work, usually I just draw out the line and then I add the pattern in later. Um, so, um, and I, I, I like also working in, for a long time I, I worked in a square. I just was into squares. Now I've gotten more into rectangles and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> but so that's sort of how I did that. It probably makes no sense at all, but, uh, they're just sort of whimsical kind of things. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. I mean, it seems like you're, you know, using the piece to start making sense of things as you're going um, intuitively. Yeah, I guess that's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I have these like weird images that I started, well, that that I've been working on. Some of them I started in when I was in Oaxaca, but like this one I, I had already, here's one I did that was just all these weird geometric lines and I thought this is boring and so I looked around and found a, a wooden animal that was a rabbit. So I added, you know, so anyway I started adding. So, you know. <laughs> Great. Um, 
Thank you. Linda and Eileen says, Nikki, how does intention behind your work change when you are working with portraits or the figure rather than uh, other imagery? Um, I feel like I have to do that person justice. Like it has to be as much soul as that person has. Like, I feel like I would have felt embarrassed if my grandmother's portrait hadn't had all that strength that I know that she had. Um, same with some, some of the other, like I do like Angela Davis or, you know, other people who I admire um, in, in the same, like it feels like I have a responsibility to get it right. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of working in the opposite direction where I'm looking at mass produced images of women and then sort of re having to rethink wanting the viewer to like rethink that idea of non-identity to identity so so like in these images they're all just found images from magazines so uh it's 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 so i don't feel like i'm really working with the figure i feel like i'm just working with um imagery in that in that way and not i mean my i have other work that is like figurative um, but yeah, in this work, it feels like I'm not working actually with uh, portraiture. It's, it's more about um, an idea of taking something that it has no identity and giving it an identity. Mm -hmm. hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I thought that what you were saying um, in the beginning about Linda about the um, like the 3D uh, the rocks creating like the um, the negative space the negative space and like um, and then becoming 2D and like the faces which you know are 3D also and then being I thought that was really interesting um, and also like the like yeah the the egg and then the stoning part of it um there's a lot there's a lot yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. some of the figures are even like um from silent movies and so there's like the what i'm trying to do in some of my this series is just build in these sort of symbols and have other you know, viewers sort of like create their own narrative by, you know, their own association with what a symbol might mean to them. And um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's sort of been fun to sort of like try and just create, you know, uh, connections between images and then also what was the 3D image? What was the 3D object that started the, you know, the image? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, so it's just 7.30. Um, if there are any questions, please add them to the chat. I have one last question um, with uh, kind of thinking about the you know, making of multiples, the role of printmaking in social change, and um, what, if, if you feel like, um, if each of you feel like, like, what are you doing um, in this time of social change um, that can be related with printmaking or education or you know, just activism, or do you feel like, I mean, because you've all spoken to that. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> now that there is a, uh, Biden has chosen Kamala Harris as its running mate, and now that we're, you know, kind of in that last three months before the election, um, like, does anybody want to speak with about that and work or yeah <laughs> things you're doing <laughs> um, I'm doing go ahead there you go <laughs> i'm doing a lot i'm working with a group called common power which um works with 
is working with 20 states that they think they can flip. And so originally it was supposed to be able to travel with them, but since that's not happening, um, it's a lot of phone banking, but also I'm making, um, it's postcarding. So I made a stamp <laughs> that said vote, you know, to send postcards out and stuff. So I guess that's my little printmaking part of, <laughs> you know, trying to, but, you know, I, I also think it's just important to call people and just keep active and try and make sure everyone gets a chance to vote and figures out how to vote and doesn't get their vote stolen from them, like all the ways they're trying to steal votes <laughs> these mm -hmm. days. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for sharing, Laurie. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say just that, um, you know, I definitely hope to do some of what Laurie's doing as far as advocating for people to vote or helping people vote or whatever needs to be done. But also just, you know, I feel like SPA and then I'm at Shift Gallery and I, you know, my work at SAM, everybody is just centering equity and really trying really hard to like create ways of, um, you know, bringing equity into the, the art world now um, in really meaningful ways, you know? And so, I mean, I'm not, like the lead on any of these projects, but I'm definitely participating and really hopeful that we do have a shift in in the world, you know, not just through the president, but through, you yeah. know, inclusion. Yeah, it's a really important time right now. I feel like there's a shift. I mean, I was around in the 60s and the 70s and a lot of that political stuff going on and I can't believe we're still doing the same thing <laughs> over and over. But, um, you know, I think maybe this time we'll get it, I hope, you know. Yeah, I think for me it's about sharing, like continuing to share um, the stories of minoritized people, right? And um, it feels a little more abstract with, with printmaking, I think. Um, you know, like I did like a, a fundraiser where I donated all these, these Black Lives Matter prints that I did to different organizations and things like that. But I think it feels more concrete, like at work, like I can see it, you know, this dismantling white supremacist policies and things like that feel easy at, at work in some ways, because I know like that policy is racist. And, but with, with printmaking, it feels, it feels a little harder in terms of the thing that I can do is keep showing up and keep sharing the stories of, of my communities and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so thank you. And thank you for all of you for being part of SPA and the show um, and participating tonight. Um, it's been really great to get to know you a little bit more and your work a little more. And I am hoping to go um, to the show this weekend. I uh, got to email Rebecca. <laughs> um, and so for everybody listening, um, the show, um, to see it, you do need to wear a mask and they're also requesting um, that you wear gloves um, and that you email Rebecca at Davidson um, to make an appointment. Um, she was on the call last time and was saying like, it's really, uh, it felt really good to be able to see the show um, in person. And um, I think that there can be up to five people in the gallery at once. So, you know, if your household member or <laughs> friend wants to go with you, um, then yeah, it's a great way to see everybody's work um, in person, but it's also online at davidsongalleries.com. And um, before we go, is there anything else anybody wants to say or share? Well, I wanted to thank both you and Nikki for doing such an awesome job with you know organizing these artist talks because I feel like that's really connected us more than you know in our little isolated places and stuff. So you know, and I'm very glad to meet both you, Linda and Eileen, and I hope someday we can. <laughs> see each other in real life, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. I'm glad that um, you participated, Lori, and that we um, got to see your studio. And um, I hope, uh, yeah, that these can be a little bit of connection um, 
in these times. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's um, if when this ends, you know, like I will seek out all these folks that I'm meeting on Zoom. And, well, <laughs> that way, that's great. You know, it's expansive. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> we'll end. It will end. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, if anyone wants to stick around and chat afterward, we're going to stop um, recording. But um, thank you so much to all of our artists and um, thank you, all of our uh, audience. <laughs>